How's it going, everybody? Having fun? Gen Con weekend online? A lot of folks sad, reminiscing. Uh, they can't do Gen Con. Gen Con stands for Geneva Convention. <laughs> the, it's actually a gaming convention started in Geneva, Wisconsin. Uh, going on this weekend. It's all being done virtually, online. Uh, some companies are doing demos through Tabletop Simulator. Uh, try and check those out. Some people are using Roll20 to run their role-playing games. Uh, and then a lot of online websites are doing Gen Con special sales. So if you're looking for any gaming stuff, whether it's new or old or specialized, go ahead and check out Gen Con online. I used to go to Gen Con quite a bit. I think I went for about 15 or 16 years straight. Um, then a couple years ago, I just stopped. It just got to be a little too crowded. For me, um, you would have to sign up for your events back in, oh, good grief, like May, uh, April or May. And you had to be online at noon on that Sunday, constantly hitting the uh, process button on the tickets that you already put into your shopping cart a couple of weeks before. I think the last couple of Gen Cons I went to, I missed out on all but one of my tickets that I wanted. Um, it, it just got way too big. A um, little too crowded, hard to move around the exhibit hall. So I'm now looking at maybe doing Origins when conventions start back up. Uh, just because I really love gaming conventions. I mean, it's got everything there. You get to see new stuff. You get to demo new games before it comes out. Uh, you get to see the artists, uh, talk with them, get sketches done, uh, your favorite cards signed by them. Uh, you get to talk with the game creators. It's just really, really fun. The purpose of this video, though, is one of the things that I loved doing at Gen Con is going around the exhibitor hall looking for old games or anything that was clearanced or out of print. That way I could find some games to play really cheap. I love cleaning up in the clearance section. Uh, one of the last Gen Cons I went to, Fantasy Flight Games announced um, in their in-flight report, which was usually the report they did Wednesday night into Thursday, and the convention would open on Thursday. They announced that they were going to be reprinting the old West End Star Wars D6 system. So at that Gen Con, I went around every clearance exhibitor that I could find and scooped up any of the old Star Wars West End D6 uh, adventures, um, support manuals, uh, anything I could find. There were only a couple other people out there that I saw that were doing that as well. So I was able to you know, stock up on old Star Wars adventures, waiting for that reprint to come out. I went home, had it pre-ordered with my local game store, and then waited. And then when it came out, you know, it's, it just fit the collection perfectly. It was an amazing product. But, you know, the whole process of going through all the clearance areas, hunting, um, hunting for those bargains, hunting for the items. It's just the thrill of the chase that really gets me as a collector. I just love trying to hunt something down, complete a set. What bargains can I find? Uh, so... Yesterday, um, I went out to a local shop called Ollie's, Ollie's Bargain Outlet. And if you're in Salisbury, Maryland, feel free to head over there. They might still have some of these in stock. Just to see, I mainly went in there um, to get books, comic books, coloring books, and also to see, you know, what sort of toys or games do they have. I was really surprised by the selection. We're going to go over them right now. We're going to start with my most expensive purchase which was Council of Four by Simon Games. Some people say Simon Games, I say, come on. Uh, cool mini or not. Great company, makes beautiful games, amazing product value. Council of Four, didn't know anything about it. I was walking down the aisle, I saw this huge box and I was like, uh, you know, that, that the cover caught me first. Uh, and then I checked the back. Um, it looks like beautiful components, an amazing map. Uh, looks like you got player boards, pieces. You get a wealth of pieces. Uh, look at this, 11, 
of the generic characters. Looks like these are basic merchants. Uh, and then you have four of each of these. These look like the council members. Uh, two to four players. All right, got me all ready. Uh, 14 plus, all right, that means it's gonna be a strategic complex kind of game. And 40 to 70 minute. I've had an hour, uh, maybe an hour and a half is the length of a game that I like. Uh, anything that's gonna be two or more hours. Not sure my attention span is going to stay in it, especially if it's the sort of game where I take my turn and then all the other players take their turns and then I'm just sitting there for 15 minutes while they're taking their turns and there's no real interaction, there's no back and forth. That's why a lot of the war games I play, uh, such as like um, Dust 1947, um, I'll do an action, then they do an action, then I do an action, then they do an It's more back and forth as opposed to 40k where I move my entire 100 piece army and do all of my actions and then my opponent gets their turn. It's way too much downtime for me. <clears throat> so two to four players, 40 to 70 minutes, it fits in my wheelhouse. <clears throat> I still don't know much, oh, sorry about the coffee, my uh, Claritin is kicking in. Still don't know much about the game itself. I haven't really had the time to look it up, but I will read you from their website. What do we got here? Council of Four on uh, Simon's website for $59.99, so $60 on their website. Uh, in Council of Four, players act as wealthy merchants, each one looking to form their own trade empire across the three kingdoms. However, each city in these kingdoms is ruled by a council that isn't willing to just let anyone set up shop. Players must gain sales rights by manipulating the people sitting on the various city councils. Doing so will allow them to get the contracts they need to make a sale. By connecting cities where they have influence, they create networks and score points. If the councils prove troublesome, players can always look to gain the favor of the queen herself and gain sales rights that way. So I'm not sure exactly what to expect from the gameplay. I'll have to watch a couple gameplay videos, but let's take a look at how much I spent on it. $19.99. $19.99 for a $60 Seabon game. Thank you, Ollie's Bargain Outlet. If they have any more of these, I'll probably pick up at least one more. Um, just so I can keep one sealed and make a nice Christmas gift for uh, any of my board gaming friends. Let's go on to the next purchase that I found there. Level 7 Invasion. This is put out by Privateer Press. Uh, they do War Machine and Hordes. The miniature skirmish game. This one caught my attention. At first, I wasn't even going to touch it. Um, just because the, the artwork really didn't grab me. And then I saw it was Privateer Press. And I was like, well, their miniatures game is fine. But I really haven't done many of their board games. But then I saw Semi-Cooperative. And I love cooperative games. So I'm not sure what the Semi is. Maybe there's like a trader mechanic or a defector mechanic. Um... Global defense game for three to five players. <clears throat> All right, so it sounds like a pandemic, but instead of diseases, it's aliens. Okay, sure. Let's, uh, let's take a look. And then I picked it up. Oh my goodness, this this thing has some weight to it. This has some heft. Uh, so you can see the board right here, some of the pieces. Let's get up a little bit closer on that. You can see the reflection of my tablet there. And you got what looks like probably the player board down here. Three to five players. So definitely a group game. You can't do uh, one player or um, two player, unfortunately. So I'm curious if there's actually a one or two player variant. Uh, two to four hours. So this is a longer game, uh, but the price point, I had to pick it up. Um, might not play it a whole lot, but you never know. I might uh, watch a learn to play video, but for the again, for the price I got it, 
I had to pick it up. I might go out and get another one again, just so I have one that I can gift to uh, one of my board game friends. Uh, 14 plus. So I know it's going to be strategic. It's going to be a little bit complex. Let's take a look at what the little website says about it. Uh, it says it came out September 24th, 2014 um, on Privateer Press's website, $89.99. So $90 game. Uh, <clears throat> the year is 2020. Uh, the world hovers on the brink of annihilation. Preceded by a devastating orbital attack, a warlike alien race known as the Hydra has besieged the planet. Their invasion force carried on enormous dropships that dwarf city blocks and rain devastation from above. The Hydra's ultimate goal is the eradication is to eradicate <laughs> the last survivors of their ancient nemesis, the Gin, an alien race that has taken refuge on Earth. Humanity is caught in the apocalyptic crossfire. As widespread panic grips the populace, governments topple, economies crumble, and order dissolves. In these desperate days, mankind's only hope lies with the Gin, and one of their most brilliant minds, Dr. Kronos, a being as guilty of atrocities against humanity as those who hunt him. Uh, so I will say, this is all taking place in 2020. It sounds like that's all happening right now, and we don't even need aliens. We're doing that to ourselves. But that's a little too little too real. Uh, let's get back to games. Let's see how much Ollie's had this for. $14.99. 15 bucks for a $90 privateer press game. Definitely got some heft to it. Um, even if I never... Get a chance to play it. Fifteen bucks for this. I, I had to pick it up. And Ollie's is one of those uh, discount places um, where they buy liquidation stuff. So they're buying the stuff pennies on the dollar. Uh, and then they have like their own selling metric uh, based on how much they had to pay for it. You know, they do some like online research for how much they go for online. So they, they do put things out for a budget. If you don't have an Ollie's um, in your home location, uh, there's plenty of liquidation places out there or clearance stores. Um, definitely make a trip out there. Make sure you're being safe. Wear your masks, uh, wear your gloves, hand sanitize, uh, social distance of six feet. But there right now are some really good deals out there. And some of them are hidden. Next up, keeping our value train going. As you notice, the prices keep getting lower and lower. Uh, we've got 3012, the deck building game. Uh, Cryptozoic, I believe. Yep, Cryptozoic Entertainment. Look at that cover. Let's go on over, uh, pull up this game's information. What we got going on here? Just look at the artwork on these cards. And <laughs> in the plastic, you can see the reflection of my, my tablet set up. I have it hanging over the table here. I mean, the artwork alone caught my attention. This was the only copy that they had on the shelf. Um, so I grabbed it mainly because of that. And then I saw the price of it and I was like, yeah, this, this is, this was a good buy. Uh, looks like it's got a couple little holes in the plastic, but otherwise, you know, it's, it's brand new. It's still sealed, still wrapped. Uh, let's take a look at what we've got here. Uh, MSRP on this on Cryptozoic's website was $44.99, so 45 bucks for this. Uh, playing time, 45 to 60 minutes. Awesome. Great game length. That fits my uh, that fits my bailiwick. Uh, for ages 15 and up, so I know it's going to either have mature themes in it or it's going to be a little bit more strategic than a standard game. All right. Uh, you're going to have 120 action cards, 48 encounter cards, 15 gold tokens, 5 oversized hero cards, 20 ally cards, 20 weapon cards, 20 scouts, 5 hero tokens, 1 rule book, 1 game board, one six-sided die. 
Uh, release date was October 23rd, 2012. So definitely been out for a little while. I didn't even know about it. I hadn't even heard of it. Um, so coming across this little gem, picking up for the price that I did, amazing buy. Definitely had to pick it up. The year is 3012. It's been a millennium since the Armageddon. Deep in the Yucatan jungle, humanity has mutated, degenerated, and segregated into five clans. Jaguar, Snake, Monkey, Gar, and Bat. These clans now battle it out for dominance in the region, cooperating when it suits them and actively working against each other when the opportunity arises. Starting with only a handful of scouts, you will build up your clan's presence by adding weapons, allies, gold, and action cards to your deck. Soon you will have amassed enough strength to take on encounters where you can really prove your worth. He who can prove his mastery over steel, flesh, and fear will be crowned the living god and win the game. That's, I mean, that's amazing. Two to four players vie for dominance in the strategic deck building game. Uh, features player interaction during almost every turn. You are never out of the action. This is all right off Cryptozoic's website for this game under key features. Level up your hero. Uh, build up your hero's combat ability by gaining experience from encounters. All right, that sounds awesome. Uh, why do I not know about this game? Comes with everything you need to play it right out of the box. $45 game. Ollie's let me get it for $7.99. Eight bucks. Eight bucks for this game. Uh, is that is that like a Gen Con bargain or not? Eight bucks for this thing. I don't think I've ever found anything at Gen Con as amazingly priced as this. But being able to hunt for these definitely gave me that. Ooh, that that you know I'm I am getting bargains. I'm digging through the bins. I'm I'm asking, hey, can we make a deal? You know, it it definitely felt good getting this for eight bucks. Can't wait to open it and give it a try as soon as we're allowed to get back together and play some games. Uh, continuing on, <laughs> that's right, we're not done. War Machine, high command. But wait, let me put that one to the side. War Machine, high command. The Faith and Fortune set. But wait, there's more. And then, of course, Hordes High Command. That's right, they had all three. They had plenty of these. Um, they had like two shelves full with all three of these. They didn't have the small little two-player um, set. However, they did have each of these. Um, all three High Commands. War Machine, War Machine, Faith and Fortune, and then the Hordes one. Let's just go over these real quick. Uh, so the War Machine one came out August 28th, uh, 2013, uh, $44.99 on Privateer Press's website. Uh, it gives you Crits, Kador, Protectorate of Menoth, and Signar. And then Faith and Fortune, uh, September 24th, 2014, so about a year after. Uh, $44.99 as well, so another $45 game. Gives you rep Retribution of Sira, Convergence of Cricks, Highborn Covenant, and Four Star Syndicate. Uh, 386 cards in that set. 386 in the first one as well. And then the Hordes uh, came out October 9th, 2013, so the same year as the War Machine High Command. Um, it doesn't look like they did an expansion for... The Hordes one. It just has the base one listed. Uh, and that was $44.99 as well. So all three were $45 games. Uh, the Hordes one gives you Trolls, Circle of Oberos, Legion of Everblight, and Scorn. What can they tell us? And just look at that artwork. War Machine and Hordes always had beautiful artwork to go along with it. Um, yeah, I loved the miniatures game. It was just a fun, quick little skirmish game. I really didn't get into it too much because all the miniatures were metal, and I'm not a big fan of metal. I can't stand painting metal miniatures. Um, but they started going over to resin and plastic. Unfortunately, I'm in other games now, and I really don't have the budget to go back to 
this game. Plus, most of the people at the local game store play other games. Um, Warhammer 40k, Age of Sigmar, Brutality. Um, I think it's Rangers of Silvermoon, Evermore, uh, Dark Shadow. I'll have to look it up. Uh, and everyone started getting into Dust, uh, Dust 1947, just because the miniatures come pre-assembled, pre-primed, and all you have to do is paint and play, and the games are pretty simple. Uh, but this, the box contains game rules and 386 cards, including, uh, like, Trollblood, Circle, Legion, and Scorn, uh, 15 Winds of War cards, and 15 Location cards. Uh, Horns High Command is a deck-building card game for two to four players set in the foreboding wilds of Western Imran. This standalone game can be played with just the contents of this box or combined with other Hordes High Command products for a customizable experience. Leverage your resources, gather your armies, and dominate your foes to stake claim to the wilds of Western Imran. Uh, a weird thing that I'm seeing is it really doesn't tell you number of players or length of gameplay. That is interesting. That's pretty unique. I've not seen that on a board game before. It doesn't even say on the website. Yeah, it doesn't give you number of players or uh, uh, two to four players. All right, there we go. But it's in the game text. It's not actually set to the side. That's weird. It doesn't give you game suggested game length. Uh, or suggested ages. But still, we got all three of these. Uh, one of each. All brand new. All brand sealed. Where's my Ollie's label? $7.99. Well, Matt, that was just that one. $7.99. $7.99. You $7.99. Eight bucks for these babies. Eight bucks each. How is that for a bargain? I mean, hard pressed to beat that one. I might go back and pick up like two or three more of each uh, just to keep them sealed. I don't know. I might take them to like a gaming convention or something or give them away around Christmas time just because eight bucks for a $45 board game? <laughs> yes, please. But wait, we had one last buy. This one blew me away. It was probably my favorite buy of the whole thing. And I'm going to do an unboxing video of at least one of them. <laughs> I've got to. So I was looking at all of these board games down the board game aisle. And at first I didn't see it because I walked back and forth down that board game aisle three or four times just looking for things. But of course, with all these big box games, that's what my eyes were you know, now trained to look for. And I thank you for staying with me this long. I know it's a lengthy video. I love to talk and I love to ramble. Some of my shorter videos, I'm not talking. So is there a correlation? Probably. It's probably my talking. So I came across this um, on my fourth trip. I was getting ready to be done because I had this heavy armful of board games. I didn't have a shopping cart because I didn't think I would need one at first. Um, when I go in today, uh, I'm definitely grabbing a shopping cart. And then I came across for $7.99. Unopened Star Trek customizable card game, Mirror Mirror Expansion. Booster box by Decipher. Still sealed in the Decipher wrapping. $7.99 each. It was just, it was just, you know, sitting on the shelf like that. Um, so of course, going down, I that's all that you see. So I'm trained to look for these huge boxes. I just happen to see Star Trek. I'm like, oh, what what kind of stupid game is that? It's a small box. And I was like, wait a minute. Is that a booster box? And then I saw a mirror mirror and I was like, that can't be. Picked it up and I noticed there were more behind it. How insane is that? <laughs> Six booster boxes 
fresh, unopened, still in wrapping of the Star Trek Mirror Mirror expansion, $7.99 each. Tell me you have ever found something like that at a Gen Con clearance booth. Of course you haven't. It's insane. I don't know what Ollie's was thinking. They must have gotten these for like 25 cents each. I don't know where they got them from. I'm hoping, though, since I cleaned them out, these were the only six they had. I was like, you know, I'm going to be over budget with the board games and these. I had to get all these. There was no way I morally could leave any of these on the shelf. So I'm hoping, because I bought them all, other Ollie's will send them more. Or they might send them more games, more card games. These were the only booster boxes I saw, but now I am going to keep an eagle eye out for any booster boxes. I, I, I just, I still can't believe it happened. They're here in front of me. I still don't know <laughs> what happened to cause this to occur, but I'm really happy. So I'm definitely gonna be doing a booster box opening of these uh, at some point during Gen Con weekend, just so we can take a look at this, reminisce Oh my goodness, I loved this game. So many mechanics that are used now in other card games were kind of like pioneered by Decipher in this. Uh, so for example, uh, take a look at card games that use location travel mechanics. Star Trek customizable card game. Started it. Uh, in this, each player sets up uh, different space locations, uh, planets, and they are on a track, and each one has a distance on the bottom. So if you're traveling from this location to that location to that location, you have to have that much warp speed in order to travel to that location. Otherwise, you have to, you know, that location, all right, you're out of warp speed for that one. That location, that location, all right, you're out of warp speed for that one. So it was very location-based. And then you performed missions and away teams at those locations. Uh, so you, during setup, you and your opponent would each put cards, dilemmas, I think they were called, underneath those locations. Some were good, some were bad, and you tried to see the good ones where you wanted to go and the bad ones where you knew your opponent wanted to go. And as you did an away team, you revealed uh, the top of those dilemmas and you had to face them with your away team. Once there were no more dilemmas there, you completed the planet and you got those victory points. So that kind of sounds like you know, going to location, location like that, doing missions with your characters. That's right. The Arkham Horror LCG. So a lot of different mechanics that were used in these older games that are dead, long gone, Unless you can find them for eight bucks a booster box at Ollie's. Thank you, Ollie's. Such an amazing buy. Um, go back and explore some of these old games. It's a great buy. This is what I loved doing at Gen Con. Uh, Thursday, I might have an event or two, but for the most part, I kept Thursday just to walk around the exhibit hall, go by the artist's alley to drop off my signatures or commission a sketch. That way they had plenty of time to finish it for Sunday before we left. And then I would map the exhibit hall, you know, what vendors to look at. I would pick up any great deals immediately, and then I would plan the rest of my budget for the rest of the weekend. And then Friday, Saturday, I would do other events. I would try to get demos in in the exhibit hall. And then Sunday was purely exhibit hall. Just trying to get those convention closing specials, um, scooping up any promos or commission exclusives that were still left over because at that point, you know, the rush was over. Everyone tried to get the convention exclusives and promos on Thursday. So there were huge lines. People were wasting their time being in line. I came to realize that, you know, if I'm going to get the promo, I'm going to get the promo, but I would rather maximize how many places I could go, how many things I could do by limiting not being in line. And it worked out, you know, whiz kids, um, would only release so many of their convention exclusives at a time. And then they would get more in, always. We would walk up to WizKids booth on a Saturday or Sunday, and they'd be like, yeah, we're getting ready to release more at 12. Well, all right, it's 11.55. Let me just stand here. 
Got him. Every year. Got him. This, this is amazing. So I'm going to go <laughs> take a shower, get dressed, and head out to Ollie's on my way into work just to see if they have any more stuff. Hope everyone had fun looking at all these awesome buys. If you have a clearance budget area like this, uh, go to that store. But again, be safe while you're doing it. Wear your mask, wear gloves, hand sanitize, social distance six feet. Um, be safe while you're hobbying. But during this Gen Con weekend, take part in it. If you've never been able to get to Gen Con before, Gen Con Online is making everything the most accessible it could possibly be. Companies are doing live streams um, about you know what, what's going on. They're doing demo videos, demo streams where you can participate in, you know, make your comments about what moves you want to do. Uh, go to Roll20, sign up for some role-playing games. The D&D &D exclusive adventure that was always at Gen Con, see if you can get into that. If you've never been to a Gen Con before, this is the best opportunity for you to feel what Gen Con is like. There are so many websites out there having gaming sales and product sales and product releases. Convention exclusives are open to everyone now because of this. Yeah, there's a limited supply. But during this whole thing, you think companies aren't going to make extra to get those extra sales? Everyone needs their money. Everyone's doing sales. Buy it up. Be responsible with your hobbies. Be safe as you go out shopping. But yeah, enjoy your hobbies. Have fun. I'm definitely going to have fun with this. I'm going to go out and see what else they got. Maybe they got more stuff in since yesterday. Who knows? Uh, I may have missed uh, something. Definitely going to go back and do some more hunting. Thank you for watching. Thank you for staying with me. Have an amazing Gen Con online weekend. And as always, during this whole COVID situation, you stay safe. Later.